This should be a great situation for MIP. They've often been uh, very comfortable on Overpass. Pit was always a great addition for them on this map. They've got all the versatility. Although, James, I do recall Angel he used to always have good games on Overpass as well. So maybe he can uh, he can bring something here, a bit of a different flavor for an IP to face up against. Big fans of uh, Bondic. I think Dan and I both are from the flip side days. So we'll see if he can bring uh, those performances, well, continue them in this uh, Hellraiser's lineup. We just had a lot of turbulence. The Kazakhstanis have come and gone. Now they find themselves replaced with the likes of Dead Fox. Stiko, good friends with... Um, with Guardian, actually. So let's have a look. Hellraiser starting on the CT side. Bondic with a forward spawn. I would expect him to go for those jewels around the fountain, as we commonly see from the counter terrors. Dead Fox with a smoke and a diffuse kit. We've seen a lot of uh, high explosive grenade and diffuse kit. You might see that from NIP with Freiburg on the, on the CT side when that comes for now. We're going to see them on the uh, T side, Freiburg, smoke, double, flash, Bondit going into connector. If you just walking their way into the stairs. Oh, they're going to find the Hellraiser's players. There's one for Forrest. What else can he find? It's Freiburg, actually, that catches Angel. And that leaves NIP with a five versus three. That is lovely stuff. That's great. a great way to start things off. Smoke, that does suggest the B play, but Hellraiser's are playing only one man there, Stiko, who's playing every take position anyway. Up come the NIP players onto the A-bomb site where Dead Fox lies in wait. He's given himself an angle to play with that flash, allows Pit to go past, but not for very long. These headshots are flying through. Everybody getting wrecked apart from Freiburg now. Suddenly, it's one versus three. He's got the one flashbang. That has to be the best flashbang of all time if he is to do this. That smoke still on the site. Everything's silent, save for the old bird. Somewhat sinister. Freiburg waiting for an overextension from one of these CTs. They know where he is now and he's up against three. No USP in sight. Freiburg in a very tough spot. He's got time, but uh, not necessarily on his side. There goes the flash. Stiko showing a shoulder, but they can be trade fraggers. You see there's a player towards Optimus on the right of Freiburg. They can just bait until that kill comes in. Triple peak will finish things off. What a retake from our Razors. Yeah, that is pretty nice to see. And <laughs> Dead Fox just showing his precision there. So that is a nice little taster of what's to come, I hope. A player that did impress me previously was Zero, actually. You know, a, a younger player coming into the lineup. Originally, when Hellraiser was kind of collapsing all the names that we, we knew with all the names that had such tenure, you know, we saw a couple of players coming in and, and going out, and Zero was one of the ones coming in and didn't know anything about him previously, but saw some great stuff from him. So. NIP, they're going to have to throw in with the Tech Nines or throw down with the Tech Nines now. Scout onto Forest as well. Single smoke grenade on Freiburg. I'm curious what his plan is with it. It can go pretty much anywhere. A or B. There is loads of uh, ways to use one smoke very effectively. But will Forest be able to open things up? That is what they're looking for. And Hellraisers, they are being somewhat cautious here. Good start for Hellraisers. Oh, never mind. The trades will finally stop for NIP, but look at the damage they've done already. Pit unable to get any more done with the Deagle. Two kills, though. Not terrible for the NIP side as they move towards their buy round. This one will be an eco. $2,000 per person for the most part. Exists with a bit more. But Hellraiser's off to a good start. Always crucial to win that CT pistol on a map such as Overpass. Hopefully Pitt and Forest are feeling better after food poisoning from yesterday. Didn't ask them what they ate. So exists with a flashbang P250 and it's going to be uh, all the NIP players heading towards B. Just waiting for those initial grenades to come in. But it's time for that flash to get popped. And... There it is, but no one to flash close. Zero playing more defensive position. That said, only one frag, but he has Angel there as well, helping him out. So looks like uh, no one's going to pass here. Stika coming in from the back too. Hellraisers with three rounds. So NIP not with the best start ever, but Hellraisers will certainly be quite pleased with this. I wonder if they'll drop a gun and upgrade to an orb. Yes, yes indeed. Dead Fox has purchased an AWP. 
Will he go for the classic forward positioning towards the party area? He does have a spawn where he can do that. And Gary's going to continue with the UMP in this round. This uh, first buy round for NIP. I have to see how that actually goes for them, what their opening default will be. Going for the very forward peak. Blinded, no frags. Dead Fox, in addition from Hungary. The countries continue to change on this Hellraiser side. Still waiting for the uh, for the battle of Molotov in this position. Get right's always there as well. I think he's the most vulnerable player to uh, a flashbang and a Molotov in this position. On the high ground though, not sure how that would work with a Molotov. Angel deploying one. But again, man, got to get a flashbang in there before so they don't see it. But he's looking to force a player from their position. Get right has enough warning. So that's one approach to it trying to flush players out, but uh, on the high ground, as players commonly are. It has been a recent adjustment to those lurkers. Anyway, it's one man down per side. One minute on the clock for NIP with limited utility. So NIP needs to start getting some map control here. They're coming back in towards sewers and the monster positions. So it can only really be, or only will likely be with this amount of time left, uh, play onto the B-bomb site here. And Zero and Bonnick playing a very forward setup there towards the Monster Tunnel. So they might catch any players moving through there. We have to see if NIP throw the same pop flash as we saw in the last round. Boom, there it is. And that is to deal with the players that are close. Only one though, but Forrest will trade from the short position. Looking good here for NIP to get the plant finally. But Dead Fox in with a nice one onto Forrest, leaving Pen alone. How can he use the smoke to reposition? Stiko staying on the high ground for now, as is Dead Fox. Potential double peak coming in, maybe Pit. Trying to take head towards safer ground, but he might not be able to do it. The tap comes in, but Stiko is there to trade immediately. Hellraiser survives. Skin in their teeth, but they survive nonetheless. AWP in tow as well. Four for zero at present. Yeah, looking pretty good. Especially considering the form we saw yesterday out of NIP. They were definitely very scary on Dust2. But uh, Overpass is a more complicated map, and even though it is a nice map for NIP, you can see that uh, Hellraiser are off to a good start. Now, NIP, what are they going to go with? We actually have a player who has dropped from the service. We might have a small technical delay right now as we get him back. Oh, this get right, he's popped back onto the server. We've got five again, so... He's back. Small technical pause here, and... He's back in black. He's back on the attack. Hopefully, we'll be underway momentarily. Get right, zero for four. Hellraiser's four for zero. Is there a connection, Dan? Yes or no? No. The countdown has begun for round number five. Goodbye from Hellraisers. Mostly got about 2k to 1.5k, as you can see on your screens. If you are watching on a screen, often people are driving and uh, tuning in, sound only. If you are driving, hello. If you are not driving, drive safely. If you're not driving, also hello. And also drive safely if you are driving, preferably with a license, which is not suspended. 4-0 for Hellraisers. Get right moving very quickly into the short B position. Caesar peeking a uh, jumping jack, but he can't slam the hammer down. He has exist for support. Always good to have support uh, for a short B player on the T side. Oh, we've got Stiko moving into a bad position. There's a two fast frags from Zissan Get right. Now they can crush the B bomb type, but Zero said to defend it. Oh, the first few bullets don't land on anything. And that is everyone dead. See you later. Pits with two as well. And, well, that's a very fast round won by NIP. And NIP, realize it's kind of one of those situations where NIP, they know what's going on, Hellraisers know what's going on, and it's just a, ma a matter of hitting those shots. Because you see that uh, Get Right move forward for the entry. He, he knew that Angel was there. He knew that someone was close. They set up the trade frag. Get Right predicted the trade frag. So it's just about hitting those shots. And Get Right was with Exist as well, who helped him out a little bit. So Hellraiser's streak comes to an end. Yeah, that's that's one way to have a, a two-man set up towards short B. You saw Get Right in that uh, lurker spot, holding an angle on short very briefly. Sorry, a uh, connector, and exist holding down short B. The other one is to have a lurker in connector, so the CT can't split short B and take your player down in a crossfire. And there was a lurker in Freiburg, but Dead Fox was quicker on that trigger finger. These entries were nice. We have uh, a message from the internet. Someone has sent a pigeon, Dan. And uh, wow, that's that's a precariously 
dangling pizza. The last time I ate pizza, James, I got, I, got, I got food poisoning. Is that a library? On the plus side, there's no huge boxes of tissues in multiple screens. So at least we have some progress from previous computer screens and pictures done. Back in it with Freiburg there. Oh, the damage is huge there through the wall. Was, oh my God, so much damage. Almost 200, almost two players dead, but somehow get right in existence still alive. They are somehow still alive. And that's really important because they have a lot of grenades. It's very early into the round. That is, I don't think I've ever seen so much damage done through that, uh, in, in that timing. Very cool stuff from Hellraisers. But they need to follow up with some kills. They can uh, allow NIP to spend their time going for their initial. I can never jump up here. Ah, OK. So you must land on the corner. It's kind of similar to the Xbox-ish jump with a bit more strafing, air strafing, for lack of a better term. NIP taking the map control. They need to clear the toilets area and identify if Hellraisers have people towards long. It seems that might be the next target for NIP. This used to be, uh, I think this is a, a spot that Sean Gare's made fashionable. It was it was called a one and done spot, but you have a, you see the AWPA baiting there. It makes it more dangerous for NIP to run into. Bonnick should win this battle every time. Oh, that was fast. Very, very good. First bullet accuracy from Exist. That's the only way he's going to survive that. And now it's five versus four situation. Angel, though, in the blind spot bit, has no idea what's going on. Trey comes in, but so much damage. Look at the health on these players, but get right with the flanking position. And now Dead Fox and Zero against two. But again, massive health advantage here. Gary has to find their head straight away, but he won't be able to do so. Six seconds on the clock as well, so we had to, we had to fight. There was no more time for flight. Ooh, look at this boost! Oh, oh that is sick. That, that is, is sick. Nice. Very nice indeed. I, I think Angel's position, I, I wondered if he was going to uh, let the first person go past and try and get some multi-frags there, but he wanted to minimize risk and uh, look to pop heads immediately. NIP back on the buy, but it's going to be two players on Tech 9s. They've got lots of utility, though, and we know NIP will be prepared to use it. Bondic going for... Ooh, this could be a meaty HE, sending it early, and it does some damage onto Get Right. That's a third of his life gone. Hellraiser's got to be careful of that uh, connected area, especially with NIP on a limited buy. So just slowly creeping up long now. But that is where Dead Fox awaits. Will he land the flick? Oh, turned away for quite a bit of time there. That's going to allow the smoke to go in. MIP maybe just wanting to just straight up do an A set piece there, a set piece with smokes on the A bomb site. And this could go quite well for them. There's only two defend. Oh, sorry, there's only three defenders here so far. Oh, Bondic. Oh, man. <laughs> Facing Forest there in the smoke. Pit opens up as well. And now NIP on the bomb site. You can see all the nades going in. Beautiful Molotov into the truck position and exists with the spray down. That's a great round from NIP. Exists with the last one as well. Three kills for him. Proving himself to be a very strong fragger after the initial change to NIP in terms of leadership, <laughs> so on and so forth. For us, just deploying one straight into the face of Bondic. Closed casket funeral for him. Two to five, NIP on a comeback trail. They've broken the money of Hellraisers. Not much being bought by Hellraisers in this round. Of course, as I say that, they're going in for the full buy, the full force buy. Mag 7 coming out. Not a, not a gun you see on overpass every day, but today is the day. Today is the day. So it should be a fairly solid uh, comeback of a couple of rounds here for NIP. Hellraisers have to play close on the ranges. So NIP, should we should run, see them running anti-force by here. And uh, that's seen a part of the reason why the MAC-10 is useful. And again, we will often see NIP playing this way on an anti-force by sitting back for quite a while before finally running the actual strategy. Or so this is like phase one of the strategy. And then, uh, then the phase two will be coming together to attack a position. And uh, typically, you want most players up long, or you go for the uh, monster play. And uh, looks like they're going long here, but they are being a little. There's some, some uh, people hanging out still towards the bomb. Okay, now finally they're coming together. Some stragglers. 
But they all, there they are, all on a long, as expected. And Pitt with the Mac 10 can take the more risky positions here, cleaning out toilets. Very important to do that, actually, with, with the guy who's expendable. Clearing out the bogs, as we like to call them, over in the United of Kingdom. Four plays for an IP. Moving towards this long position. Will this be uh, a funnel against the force by Stiko deploying some meat shots? Will he push the smoke though? Still, NIP with a slow approach. The spray will be enough to kill three players. Zero holding angles, but there's not much that these uh, remaining CTs can do in this situation. Pot shots being taken. Pick goes down, but he's unlikely to recover that gun. Jewel with a 5 7. That could do some big damage. He doesn't realize that there's a player close to him. Still two CTs alive here, so maybe this damage could continue. They haven't picked up any weapons just yet, but uh, Angel may feel inclined to save his armor. Since he's got 8 HP, but no, he'll get taken down instead. One thing to note is about, it's just like, how many players were able to shoot clear shots, you know, that is shots where they're not blind, where they're not on fire, or where their vision is not obscured by smoke, before the bomb goes down? Because the answer there is, I think, zero. <laughs> I think the answer is zero. On fire like Richard Pryor. So that just that, that just tells you like that just you, that you're limiting the risk, you're limiting the variance with those grenades. And that is how you want to do it. That is how you run an anti-force by NIP with the textbook play, and it gives them a three and five. Good work from uh, how to get a couple kills. However, it can happen. And, uh, but now it's time to save again. So we'll probably, we'll probably see something very similar to that. NIP might mix it up and go fast into Monster um, together as a team. They are going into sewer straight away. Interesting stuff here from NIP. Surge incoming. Zeros. Oh, ding dong. Get right's going to get his bell rung. Got to be careful with that one. They've got grenades to deploy, but again, that will buy time for Hellraisers to rotate. NIP may not want to uh, walk into a trap in that respect. So they will uh, take the slower approach of the two. It's always nice when you see a CT by those barrels holding an off angle so they can peek a uh, monster tunnel, but they're not exposed to that short position. If you sit right in the corner, then you are exposed to both. And it's very easy for the T's to just come and headshot you there from short. So just bear in mind those off angles, that those of you at home who play over pass. Pit and get right are low now. Some USPs. They dominate the buy of Hellraisers, or non-buy, rather. Stiko and Zero. Well, Stiko, I think he's got a P2000, so it might just be Zero of the Deagle here. Yeah, Stiko's got that P2K. Hellraisers have stacked the B bomb site as an IP approach, eh? 30 seconds left. See Angel rotating ahead of his teammates. Maybe there will be some kind of flank from Hellraisers. And here comes the play. It's basically a very similar route. This time, uh, less than the way of smoke's used, just to allow IP to keep themselves with the range to use their AKs effectively and not force too, too many close range engagements for the pistols to run a mark in. So there's always method, there's always a reason for these smokes and how they work for NIP here so far. And uh, how Racers will not be taking this round. They'll not be coming close to even getting a frag, it seems as NIP are probably happy to just let them survive and not take the risk of dying, which is great. I like that a lot. Oh! Little pop there from Exist. Bonus kill. And another one there. Offered up to him. He'll take that as well. That kill was Dirk McGurt. Four to five. Four of five rounds for the uh, NIP side now. You see, so that's a Ooh. very nice. That's some nice decoration there. I love that. I that respect that. Gorgeous. I love. I love the wall. The uh, the brick. The brick wall there. Very very nice. I wonder if it's a true brick wall or, or a brick effect. I think it's. I think it's like a brick effect, like wallpaper or something. Or yeah. We have a technical timeout. Sorry, a tactical timeout from Hellraisers. They do not want. They do not want to give up their lead. They've had their eco round, and now they will take the timeout as they approach their next buy. No money for sniper rifles. Just one round lead for them now. Exists up there with 12 frags. Almost three times the kills of anybody else on this team. See Pitt and Forest with five. 
So we'll see if NIP can keep up this momentum now Hellraisers are back on the bind. Maybe Hellraisers will have a change in approach. I mean, one one glaring weakness has been how free a short B possession has been for the NIP side. So maybe Hellraisers will have a different approach in that respect. So another slow round from NIP. But this time they are not playing against pistols. This time we all see the full buy of Hellraisers. And Freiburg, he's, he's got uh, some help with Get Right, and they've taken over Connector. So Connector's always good for, for the T side. It allows you to have rotation options, especially if you can clear sewers out as well. But uh, no interest in that. Perhaps they just want to run the set piece on A again. And uh, this is more and more likely if they just decide in the early stages not to take any presence towards sewers. Because later in the round, that's more and more opportunities, more time that the CTs could be hiding there. And it gets harder and harder to clear it in, in one sense over time. So the fact that we see NIP still here with no nothing going on towards B really does suggest that once again, they want to go for the A set piece with some smokes execution onto the A bomb side. 45 seconds left. NIP, are they playing the clock down a bit too much? They don't have uh, much in the name of advantage at the moment. See how late that smoke is from Hellraisers. This is a problem for an IP. Almost a kill through the smoke there, but really, they need to get onto a site. Three people towards long at the moment. 30 seconds remain for this execute from NIP. Will it be the wall of smokes? 25 seconds left. And we have Herrera that's moving, in, moving into forward positions. Could even be a flank here. Will they expect a second player on the toilets? Trades elsewhere. Body coming in for that flank now. And uh, the, the kills are raining in, but a bomb needs to go down. 13 seconds. The bomb's on the floor. It's two versus two. Have they ever played their hand? There we go. Zico on the site now. And uh, with seven seconds left, he's going to get taken oh. down. Down to the wire. Did NIP play that round? Oh, man. That, that, is, that is a little bit scary. You have to start panicking in a round like that. I don't think... That feels like a, a misestimation of, of, of time for Man IP. I, I don't think it's anything else, really, because I don't think I saw a reason for them to have left it that late in reality in that round. But what they did do was put forward a lot of, a lot of rounds where their pace was very, very slow. So again, in the next versus the next buy rounds, what we might see again with, uh, from NIP is a very, very fast round, a very fast pace. Maybe go to Suez really, really quickly, or maybe even a straight up monster contact play immediately. Oh, oh the garden hose, the spray down is real. Zero again with the off angle towards short B. Three people in B though, it hasn't been enough. Mere pistols for Hellraisers in this round. And things look to be going from bad to worse. Aim punch not helping Zero out there. Dead Fox behind the smoke. But what can we expect from him in this situation? He could even be sprayed at random through that smoke. Close. <laughs> Either side, touching the shoulders. Nice. Oh. Dink there, but no, no dice. Oh. Another close uh, situation there for Bonding. Looking for the headshots. Oh, there you go. There's one. Bonding has little to lose in this situation yeah. as well. He's only got the deagle, and he could one dig three of these players. Well, they're not having any of it at this point. Don't blame them, to be honest. Don't face, don't face. It's probably what uh, somebody's saying. Oh my god, look at how low they're all getting. He's just getting all these shots off with his eagle. This is kind of nuts. Can NIP afford to lose these players? I don't know that they really can. I mean, it's it's. there's still a lot of rounds to play in this half. And, and Bonnick's killing everyone. He's actually straight up killing everyone. He just, he just killed three people just taking pot shots. That's kind of ridiculous. All right, well, maybe NIP now are going to speed things up. I, I feel like it's time. It's time, James, to speed things up. What do you think of Get Right's gloves? He's got those skulls on the oh, yeah. on the palms there. So observer, press G, please. Press G, press G, press G. There we go. Look at this glove. Look, those are those are kind of kinky. I wouldn't I wouldn't put Get Right down as a as a kinky type, but uh, they're definitely spikes on those gloves. Six to five, NIP in the lead now. Hellraiser's back on the buy with Dead Fox on the AWP. He will be uh, heading towards long with that. Get Right. Slowing down any approach from Hellraisers towards short B of that Molotov. But um, Hellraisers have not really gone there once. This time they will, however. This is the first time they've taken short B possession, but NIP are elsewhere. Yeah, after seeing those, uh, the Molotov and the flashbang, they immediately scouted that there's nothing actually there. So the entire point of the Molotov was to stop that information. Because they have the information, they're going for a rotation to have four people on A straight away. This is Hellraisers winning the info game, basically, early, to have players in position. 
This is the opposite of what NIP wanted to happen. And they could even consider to, in a situation like this, to go towards B. But it's, it's difficult to have that option now because they have no presence there. Freiburg with a, a jump peek. Again, the T's are at a shadow disadvantage around these angles, something Hellraisers can try and abuse. CTs often do. Did you mention that Pitt has a Krieg? The Krieg is out. Nope. Magic's boy promised he would uh, be Krieging today. Pitt has beaten him to the punch for the time being. Will he get any frags, though? <laughs> Forrest with a, almost a random tag there onto Bondic. Smokes down 37 seconds. Again, the clock being played, but uh, NIP are taking the bomb towards the B bomb site. Pitt was also creaking yesterday, by the way. Oh, oh my days. That was close. That was close. And here goes Pitt with the Krieg. The scope. Will it be out? Pretty strong gun, actually. Can be a one-shot kill if you find the head, even through a helmet. And uh, Pitt is losing friends. He's also losing time to plant the bomb. Nice kill. Can they get the bomb plant? Forrest able to get the kill onto Dead Fox, but there goes Forrest. Pitt now has to clutch against two more players with the Krieg. Will he predict that his flank is in danger? But no, it's going to be Zero who wins the first engagement at the front, and that'll be the round there for Hellraisers. They've been doing a good, a good job, actually. I mean, this is the first round they've won for a while, but, but that's, uh, that's, that's a bunch of rounds on the board for Hellraisers. Didn't notice how quiet the Krieg seems com in comparison yeah. to the AK in the game, but I guess it's designed uh, that way to make it more appealing in comparison. Score remains close, although uh, it's been mostly NIP in these late rounds. Hellraisers are a good spot, of course. 6-2-6, six, six. who will take a lead? And what kind of lead will it be heading into the second half? Both Orpers still intact. Stiko down to the FAMAS. Other than that, it's all good in the hood for both teams. And again, we've got uh, NIP going to Old Faithful, which is possession of Short B. Again, we've only seen Hellraisers push this early once, and NIP were elsewhere at the time. Again, Zero with the off angle. I think he may have turned his shoulder, but again, they just keep getting picked for free. That's the third time, that. Get right with him with well, two kills, just himself. That's that's all that was required just to get right. And that's basically the round because look how far away our are. They could not be further away from the bomb site. They, they could not be further away. And if look at where Freiburg is. That positioning is or could be absolute money. Very sad times here for the side of of Hellraisers. And they just have to try to hold on to their guns. And they just, I don't blame them, they just won a round. They just won a round. They need to hold on to those guns. But can NIP get rid of some of them? Dead Fox's position here is very strong. And that is why he sees a leg. And just to catch it as well, but no kill. Oh man, Forrest, that is bold. We'll go down to Dead Fox, but NIP have the ability to throw away money here to take these players down. It's very important that they at least reduce the numbers to two, but they can't do it. Oh my God, actually. Exist. How does he do that, James? Just <laughs> that never works for me. Look at this. This is the third time, at least, the third time that they've just been wrecked from short B. What What? Why, what would you do with all those screens? At least there's no tissues. Headshots and spreadsheets. That's mad, and, uh, mad spreadsheets. We have we have G2 sat next to us now, so there's, there are a lot of headshots. I feel sorry later as well. all those screens are 4x3 then. It's a bit weird, isn't it? All those screens are 4x3. You can at least put some 1.6 on there. Um, anyway, Hellraisers, I mean, there's a gaping hole in their defense, and that defense is the short B area. I mean, you can you can smoke it early. There, there are so many things you can do. You can Molotov it early. There are timings for high explosive grenades to where the, t when the T's normally emerge in that position. You can right-click jump, um, throw a smoke grenade over the wall, and pop flash yourself in off the, the B arrow sign into that position. Just something to deter NIP. They're not being deterred. They're not being conditioned to not make these plays. Crazy thing too is that actually this exists. He's been having a hell of a game. He's got 17 kills right now. Uh, NIP, they've not. The rest of NIP are just around, hovering around six to eight. That's kind of nuts, isn't it? Well, Forrest, he's going to be on the AWP again, and he's going to get himself a pick. That is a beautiful way to start. And once again, James, it does seem like NIP have smelled the weakness, and they like weakness. Weakness will be exploited. Hellraisers being exploited like they work in a sweatshop. Two CTs left, and this round is already over. Eight to six is surely 
coming our way. There goes Angel as well, leaving Bondi Cologne, the uh, flip side veteran. That's, that might be all, his, all the action he gets in this round, other than being hunted. He'll be the prey now, rather than the predator. It's always fun watching Bondic when he played with Blade and Flamey and that team as well. That was before he moved to Flipside. Ah, uh, good time. We may we may see the days of that team again. Not in terms of roster, but they were quite proficient. They were a proficient a proficient nuke team. And overfall. But with the but with the changes to nuke, so you can make those fast plays into Squeaky Door again. Maybe we will see uh, the wonders of Blade's T traps on nuke once more. Last round of the first half, and uh, Hellraisers don't have much to offer in terms of weaponry. That was a shot of a, of a, of a forest, James, but it was a pensive forest. He was pensive. He's contemplating the world, the universe, and, and all its stars. He's ponderous. It's uh, ever-expanding nature. Maybe he's thinking about uh, what he'll have for dinner. Maybe some corv, perhaps. Get right, loses a jewel. In the short B area, that's the first time we've seen that. I can think of. There is Bonic with another kill as well, making it work with this very weak buy. Somehow, can Pit clean up? He can't. Just good for one frag. As Forest alone, wondering what has become. He can ponder some more down, because his whole team are dead. Yeah, no one got getting the trades. There was two or three trading attempts that should should have worked, but they did not. But Forest actually can win this. He's got the bomb, so. With all this time, he's just got to be. Oh, is he ever checking this? No. <laughs> he has just like looking at his position. He's never going to check there. And he will not. He will die. And Hellraiser gets seven rounds on the board. Is that enough? It's, it's a really good question because obviously they did win the pistol round. So I just I wonder what NIP can do with a uh, similar situation if they win the pistol on the CT side. But if they don't, yeah, I, I have no idea what can happen in this matchup. Hellraiser's. Um We'll face the T, the T side now. We'll see if this will be more difficult than the CT side. I don't know if the um, if the score tells the whole story of that half necessarily because some of the rounds NIP won were just so easy for them to kill two or three players. Hellraisers often had three towards B, but still there was a gaping hole in short B anyway. Time for them to redeem themselves on the T side. Stiko will be the grenade man. Everybody else on Kevlar, and indeed, Freiburg is diffuse kit and HE grenade rather than a smoke. Oh dear! It's that squelchy sound. That's I heard bells, and then I heard the squelch. Someone getting shot in the in the face. Courtesy of Mr. Getwright. In comes the pay onto the oh, the, the, well, they're dead, James. <laughs> they're all dead. But Angel coming in there, but he is quickly traded by Exist. And now Stiko. No longer even remains. That was quite anticlimactic, actually. Quite anticlimactic. Yep. They were alive and then they were dead. And uh, that's all to be said. Although, obviously, get right. Got a lot of info towards B, which allows his teammates uh, to have some concern towards Connector, but otherwise focus on A. You see, as he gets that pick, there are three people behind him in the B bomb site, and they instantly rotate towards A as he gets that kill. Tech so nines, sorry. Nope. Tech, tech nines are coming in though from Hellraisers, and uh, you've always got to be somewhat careful. But only one man with grenades, and I like how Dead Fox obviously saving to make sure that he can have money for an AWP uh, by just just having a deagle. And Angel, on the, on the other hand, he's uh, he's decided to sacrifice Kevlar so he can have a smoke and a flashbang. We're going to see him line up the grenades now. There goes the smoke. That's for the cross crossing. Uh, that's to allow the players to cross more easily onto the site. And here are the UMPs, but. In come all the Tech-9. This, this crazy spray is not working out too much for the NIP side. We'll have to see if they can make this work, though, with a get right on the rotation. Everything slows down, but this gives CTs time to reposition. Hellraisers, I don't know if there's a gun that they can collect. See the UMP by the pillar, but so that would expose them to Forest on short. He will not wait. He will advance the position and clean out the round. Good start for the CT side. Damn, that's awesome. Shout outs to you guys. Lands, small lands, big lands, it's all awesome. I went to my first land, I think it was 2003. We rented a hall and uh, there were like, I don't know, eight of us there, it was awesome. You know, that my, one of my teammates, he, um, uh, one of the guys that was there, he, he made a, a, a game of Risk, the computer game. 
and he spent 20 minutes explaining it to people, and then I just quit the game, and it killed all of it, and he was mad pissed. Anyway, three round lead for NIP. This is a Nika round from Hellraisers. Dead Fox and Seeker taking early damage. You see the range being extended by NIP now. Yeah, or so much damage done before they've done anything with the Glocks. Um, you kind of want to use that to kind of trade off some of the health to gain some space to get close to a bomb plant, but no bomb plant for them. Well, Forrest gets himself some extra cash. Pretty low, though. He will get traded, but not too much else that uh, Hellraisers can do from this position. There is not a, lot of, not a lot of health on these players. There is, what, 39 health between these players. That's great. That is fantastic. Okay, well, when are they going to make their move? When are they going to make their move? They really want someone to peek them. It's not going to be much of a move, looking at the health on these players. It's going to just trip. It's going to trip out. Yeah, so like someone's going to kick the dialysis cord, and that's GG. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's a brief, brief round from Hellraisers. was the eco, so now we can get down to business. Hellraisers, you are at a four-round deficit after losing the pistol. Time for the AKs to come out. Dead Fox, AWP, no Kevlar to start with. Tight angle from Get Right. Eco frags. Eco frags, let's go. Look out for Didi from Tylu later on as well. He is the master of uh, anti-eco frags, especially on Dust2. But for now, it's uh, Sweden versus an international Hellraisers team. Yeah, one thing to look at is that NIP have decided to keep the UMPs, the Scout. They're against AKs and NORP here, so this is this is a risk. Oh, the heads, the helmets were running in there. Tag from Pitts, but no kill just yet. But the damage will definitely contribute later on. And they're aware that they've given up long here. So they've got the third man rotated onto the A side of the map, but they're playing very, very passively. So essentially, they are testing Hellraiser's ability to execute the grenades correctly and to coordinate the push onto the site because there's no forward presence for NIP. It's too risky with the T so close for them to push out, so they just have to wait for those grenades to come in and just hope for the best. Oh, Pitt doesn't see the play go straight past him. Bondic, I don't know if he knew anything about it either. Stiko's the one to trade. But it is some damage anyway. This is falling apart for Hellraiser. There are flashes coming in. Forrest will get picked off. Now it is opportunity. Just a one-man advantage for the CT. Smokes are down. Freiburg emerging through the smoke. And he will see the bomb. That leaves Bondic in a horrible position. He's facing a triple peak. NIP take the round over the line. <laughs> oh, man. Excuse me. I'll just go this way. And Okay, so he did see him. So he made, a, made the assist. But it wasn't enough. NIP made it 12 rounds. It's pretty awesome, actually, from Forrest. We didn't see his pov there at the end, but he was actually able to sneak in kind of where Pitt died behind Bondic and then killed everyone at long with a flashbang and uh, did a lot of damage to, I think, uh, it was Bondic with the USP. So Forrest was the guy that actually did the, the most damage or had the biggest impact, I think, in that round. Anyway, NIP 12-7 to 7 now, and uh, Hellraiser's is back onto just five Deagles, or four Deagles, rather, just looking for some damage, perhaps, to keep the economy honest. I mean, with five Deagles, you four Deagles even, you can't really, you don't really, have, it's, it's so difficult to get onto a bomb plant. But what you can do is play picks and uh, try to focus on getting damage in so that you can actually limit the economy of your opponents. And so that's their objective here. And they do need to do that because we've got 6.7K on exist, 8.7 on get rights, pit there nearly at six and and the other two players are poor, but that's, that's a good chunk of change. NIP, they know the situation. And uh, they will play passively. They will wait for Hellraisers. And Hellraisers will be holding these angles for a while because they are not going to see anything. This is the equivalent to eating a pack of biscuits and having no glass of water. I just left with a really dry mouth for ages. The well lies on the A and B bomb sites. And it will be an arid journey there for the Hellraiser side. Death by paper cuts, perhaps. The, the thing to remark upon here as well is that you have to credit NIP because once again, they know what kind of round Hellraisers are trying to play, the picks. But they are not giving them the picks. Even though they have superior picking weapons, they are just forcing them to do this. Running with Eagles is very rarely all that effective. But that's what NIP are forcing Hellraisers to do forcing them into the worst position possible. And look at that. They just crushed the push. Look at that. That is, again, this often there's this. not much to say about the round, but if you really look at it, 
NIP made the perfect decision how to play, how to set themselves up. Look at this. Look at him. Let's get right. He has played this game before. Six round lead for NIP. Hellraisers, they are running out of buy rounds. They need success. They need it soon. This is uh, almost the fullest of full buys. Dead Fox missing one grenade. Other than that, they're all in. Oh, he doesn't have a helmet either. So he better be quick on that trigger. Two M4s on the CT side. Versus Dead Fox, they may feel like f uh, two AKs, along with the two that exist and get right wheeled at present. Forrest just holding a smoke towards the outside of the toilets. You can see that smoke has been deployed. Buying time for his team, killing time for the Hellraiser side, who are taking short V. Yeah, good opening there from Angel. Again, that Suez presence can often be great. Pressure, ooh, an ape. Not gonna find anyone, I don't think. Uh, big miss. That's a big miss. So how is this just chilling on their advantage, forcing NIP to go for aggression? Oh, pick from Dead Fox. He actually is able to get himself a nice angle there from Short. So Short has been abused, just as it was when the NIP on the T side. Oh, this is tense stuff. This is very tense indeed. Three versus four. Can NIP swing it back in their favor? Get right emerging. And repositioning. Could do some damage there. Could do a follow-up. Oh, Pit's blind though. And surely he's been spotted through the smoke. Get right goes down. Pit will trade, but he's got a lot of work to do now. And that's a very risky play to go back through that smoke once he's taken that second shot. Running distraction while Forrest can see what he can do. Spotting zero in the water, but uh, the double peak is very possible. Pit trying to spam through the boxes on the site, through those planks of wood. Angel exposes himself. But Hellraisers, they do enough. They take it over the line. Many more rounds to come where that one came from. And there's a lot of money on NIP, so they'll be able to buy. That was kind of scary, actually. Uh, Pit just going pretty mad with the AWP. I was, I was, uh, I almost could see in my mind's eye that there was going to be a retake uh, attempt that went well for them there. But Hellraisers do hang on, and they've now put NIP in a spot where they have to spend all their money. So. There's a chance for Hellraisers in this round, but if Hellraisers lose this round, that's probably it, because their money is going to be so screwed, and NIP will already be on 14, that's probably going to be match. So Hellraisers have to win this round. They have to win it. There is no other way for them to win this match, I don't think. From a money perspective, it just doesn't work out for them. No fast aggression from Hellraisers anywhere on the map. Zero moving through the tunnel towards short B. And again, Angel in connects, just holding the angles, making sure there's no pinch from the CT side in that respect. NIP choosing to play passive. Don't want to give up any early picks unnecessarily in this round. Ryberg going to exist deep towards B. The other three towards A for the time being. Forrest and, uh, well, Pit rather, will be orping long on this occasion. Ryberg going for some jump peaks, trying to find some information, but limit the risk with which he does it. Get right, getting taken down. I think that might have been on the high ground towards B. But Pitt is going to spot a bunch of players. They're going to jump across. He misses the shot. Pop flash in. He won't re-peak with it, though. That's actually quite smart, as there's two, two or more players on the angle. Repositions himself. And he's probably aware that they're likely setting up grenades from this spot. So let's see if he can get something from this. Oh, an arm shows, but Pitt misses the shot again. In comes the push into Forest. He's only going to get one. Pitt comes out. He emerges. But he will meet his demise at the hands of Angel. And it leaves Exist. And what is he left with? What has he been left with? Well, oh, there's some Christmas lights there. <laughs> so, NIP gonna be broke. Why, yep. sorry, why are there any Christmas lights there, James? And they, they will be, they'll be, they, they, they pop up here and there. I don't know all the locations on the new uh, maps, any updated maps. I don't know where the Christmas lights are on Overpass, but I would imagine there are some towards the A site as well. There should be ground. more Christmas lights. I don't. I just. No, I hate Christmas. All right, all right then. Fair enough. No lights on the A sites. This is good. This is good news. Some on the truck at least. Anyway, anyway, I think you. Had, I think I interrupted you. I think you had a, probably a. Po you probably had a point you're going to make. It's gone now. Well done. All right.
Well, Hellraiser won the must-win round, and uh, that does give them a chance because now NIP have uh, have a save. They got one save. Probably just a uh, very light investment indeed. Oh, oh. speaking of lights, Dan. Oh, thank speaking you, thank you, Observer. Thank you. The Observer found some lights for me. But why is there only two on that light? It's just two. Because it's because Christmas is mad poverty, yo. That's why. That, that is. Just it was for me anyway. Right Plastic Christmas tree. My Christmas tree sucked. Back in the day. Triggered indeed, Mr. Producer. Four rounds. This is this is uh, this is recoverable for our raiders. They need to test here though, and they will need to dispose of that weapon. Or well, unless Angel can get up two kills here. All good in the hood. If you're on Hellraiser's hood, exist with the, with the Deeg towards the A site. But uh, well, actually, I mean, depending on where Hellraisers go. There's a lot of damage to be done by Exist here. That uh, shot to the chest should do 45 to 55 damage, so both uh, Stiko and Angel can get taken down very quickly. So this one remaining man is potentially very dangerous. It reminds me of that uh, round Envy versus Dignitas on Overpass, known as towards the bomb site, where Envy had tons of Deagles, and all the Dignitas players who were on the full buy were heavily tagged. And that basically, I think it might be in a major qualifier as well. And Envy won that round that pretty much crushed the chances of Dignitas. I'll never forget that. I witnessed it and it was brutal. And there is a uh, Christmas tree there. Looks better than There's a, some a Christmas crap I to deal with. Oh, there yeah. are some Christmas lights, James. Not this, this pitiful thing where you put two light bulbs on a phone wire and call that Christmas decoration. That's like, that's what my Christmases were like, man. That's just half assed. Anyway, moving forward. Phone was disconnected, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know why, James. <laughs> anyway, can't make that joke. But anyway, um, moving forwards. Back to this one. Hellraisers, uh, they're looking pretty good all of a sudden. I mean, they had so much success when they moved through, forwards through to Suez. You can see that they're actually doing it from a different angle this time. A slightly delayed timing, and they're going to be splitting onto it. And so uh, there's no presence there from NIP. In fact, there's only two players on the bomb site. So perhaps there is indeed a real opening here for Hellraisers to abuse. They look like they want to get the entry frag here. We've got Dead Fox himself, Mr. Pick, Mr. Orp, guy who picks with Orp <laughs> in position. Mr. Guy who picks with Orp. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful. Hellraisers looking to do uh, unto NIP what was done to them. Got grenades flying all over the place. But uh, you can see. NIP not making the mistakes that Hellraisers did. Ooh, that's always a good angle to hold, and Freiburg goes straight into it, but just a one kill. Will there be any more for Hellraisers? Zero emerging from the monster tunnel, but he's blind. He is blind as a bat. Get right looking for a better weapon, can't find one. Four versus four, 25 seconds left, and Hellraisers are rotating to the A site. There's nobody there, but this is a quick rotation for the uh, CTs, and they're on the move. Oh, they've changed the decision. Hellraisers, they've got 15 seconds. Make a play, guys, make a play. Bodix walking, he's got the bomb. He's nowhere near the site. So 10 seconds, it's all fine. Everything's fine. Six seconds, he has two and a half seconds to spare. It's great. Everything is okay. Hellraisers have the bomb down. They have the numbers advantage. They are now equal on the numbers. The numbers are going away. The numbers are dimin diminishing now. So IP move forwards. What else can they find here? Plenty of time. Get right finds himself an upgrade. Christmas come early for him. Spray now comes in from Get right. Almost finds himself a finish on the continuation there onto Dead Fox. Two HP for him. Can he still make a play from that position? Stiko readies himself to strike, but it will be Pit that strikes not once but twice, and that's going to be the round there for NIP. Great retake coming in from them to break what was otherwise a pretty decent streak from Hellraisers. Three rounds nice. in a row was what they got. Forrest got disconnected from the server during that uh, round as well. So there'll be a, sh a short pause here as that's dealt with, but even better for NIP. That uh, Pitt clutched that round. You saw Dead Fox go for the wide angle, trying to stop the diffuser. Get right had to be the one to defuse. He, had the one with, he was the one with the kit and he indeed delivered. So hopefully uh, Forrest will be joining us soon. 14 to 10. Hellraisers, they have the money for the buy. Dead Fox on almost 10K. So uh, Hellraisers, they've lost another round. However, they're in a much better spot to continue their recovery. That's a great beard. That is a great beard. 
What about speaking, these beards? Speaking of beards, not quite as substantial, but their performances in the game are. You can see Exist is having a really, really good game. We saw in the first half he had 17 kills. He's He's keeping things going well into the second half. Dead Fox, he's an interesting player to highlight because actually, as far as his impact goes, he's been the guy that on the T side has been trying to get the picks, the opening kills for his team as the uh, dedicated AWPer. And he's not a player that we've seen obviously a lot from. He was not one of the players who has had such a big legacy or huge tenure as some of the previous players in the How Is This lineup that we've come to be used to seeing over, over time. And, and uh, it, again, also the shoes that Oscar left to fill. Perhaps he has done a good job to fill them with such performances. So the Forrest is back on the server. We should be... Uh, nope, he's just gone again. He's gone. He was here, and now he is no longer here. And it's gone. Speaking of bids. And he's back. Ryback has a red beard. I never noticed that before. So they're restoring the money, and then we will be good to go. That is quite a bit. That's, he's, he's, but that's well-groomed, though. He's uh, well-groomed. He's reaching... He's approaching the levels of like a ninja master beard, like that uh, that black and kill build yeah, well, with the beard the, stroking. I, the man bun really makes it, actually. You're right. Oh, shout outs to uh, all the people in Umia. There are, there are loads of pros who actually live in that place. I think it's a big Threat location there. for Sweden. I wasn't going to say who lives there, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Well, he also lives in other places. He moves around, but uh, that's where he goes to school. He's of no fixed abode. He is, uh, he moves all over the place. So again, Dead, Dead Fox, he's been uh, leading the kills for his team at the moment, but we'll see if he can continue to do, to do so. They are four rounds behind. This was quite a monstrous comeback on the pistol round. Retake of advantages as opposed to the site itself. But yeah, he's been integral to the victories of Hellraisers. Yeah, funny fact about uh, uh, Fred actually uh, going to Numia. Actually, uh, there was a spot once, once where he, before he kind of became famous against CSGO, because obviously a lot of players knew him from from uh, 1.6, and he was famous in 1.6 era, but there was quite a big gap between them uh, moving forwards. But uh, people used to ask him before he got famous again, oh, is, oh, so you know that DDK guy? Can you get me an autograph? They would ask him for that. That's... But, him, but he was like, but, but what about me? Anyway, <laughs> you can see he has some more stats there on Dead Fox. Indeed, uh, once again, he's been uh, playing pretty well. And it's great to see again as, as a new addition. And uh, also, Zero is, is a player to pay m uh, closer attention to as, as an upcomer in Hellraiser. So I've been really being brought up by the experience that Angel has, because obviously Angel has been playing kind of strike for quite some time on a on a pretty pretty high level. So, so yeah, we're just waiting for the uh, money to be restored for Forest. Those heat bag things that the players are playing with, I um. At the ECS finals, I, I held one for the first time because I've never touched those before. It's insane the heat that comes from those. They, they have to be radioactive. Maybe they are, they are from the nuke. Yeah, some of them are crazy. Because they're just mad hot. It's nuts. I don't know how all of them work. There, there are some you can get where like the more that you, you rub them, the hotter they get. Oh, yeah? And, and in some places, those ones are actually uh, banned in some countries, I heard. I would love to know the science behind those things because I do, I do not understand how they are so warm. They have to be... Yeah, they can get really hot, actually. They have, they have to be some kind of isotope madness going on there. Well, I, I hope not, because that's that's not good. Yeah. That's not good, James. Maybe some polonium in there. Who knows? I doubt, I doubt they are bringing the polonium T10. What about 211? What about 212? If you are just joining us, 14 to 10. The game is currently paused as the admins try to restore the cash monies onto uh, Forest. So he did drop from the server during the previous round. So uh, this extended pause, okay, it seems to be fixed now. Headset back on again. This extended extended pause, though, maybe uh, provides a break of momentum to Hellraisers. Yeah, and then P obviously are going to be well along the way to being able to get themselves to the major because a team that uh, they they had some trouble in uh, in. Obviously, the past past majors. Obviously, uh, you know Pitt having to get stood in for initially by threat at very short notice in Columbus and, and likes of that. They've had a bit of a tumultu tumultuous time recently, but they're having a very smooth time and they're definitely on the up here. And they're looking pretty. This is looking like a sure thing if they can take down Hellraisers. NIP, 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 NIP. As a NMP player, they're kind of spoiled. We have a lot of fans and everyone is sharing for us. Going into a major, it's so much different from a normal tournament. 
the preparation, the atmosphere, the crowd. NIP with a big win here. We've been stepping it up lately, and I think going into the E-League Major, I think we're in good shape. That shot of Exist lying on the table reminds me of, uh, I think it's David Hasselhoff lying naked with a bunch of puppies. Feel free to Google that image uh, if you really want to see it. It's quite hilarious. Anyway, we're back into the game. It's time to <laughs> why, resume. Why, why trigger me? Why but trigger me? Hellraisers have called a, t <laughs> Hellraisers called a timeout. But the thing is, under major rules, I don't think you can talk during technical timeouts and such. Yeah. So so uh, that would, yeah. Well, how do you, how do you feel about these uh, Christmas lights? Oh, this have got some primary colors in there. <laughs> Maybe if you mix the LEDs together, you can have more diversity, James, because that that is just <laughs> poverty right there. All of three bulbs. Three LEDs. Christmas decorations does not make three LEDs. Anyway, we've got, uh, of course, a timeout. Do we have timeouts? We had a timeout, but now we have him raving, ra raising his arm, and someone has disappeared from Hellraiser, so we may be here for a while. Nice. Nice. You can, you can see there that uh, in the video, Exist said that they are very ready for okay, the Three the players are reconnecting like to the server. They're in good shape. And we can see that. We can actually see that. There's attention to detail from every perspective, and the performances do look better across the board. Why are you reconnecting? Mm, oh my god. Stop your reconnecting. We want them to reconnect. Why are you, why are you saying that? But why do they, dis why do they disconnect? I don't know. Anyway, Hellraisers are a team who've been through a lot of changes. We mentioned previously all the Kazakhstanis have left the team. Oscar was on there for a while, went to Mouse Sports, then it didn't work out, and now he's kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. They, they were always a team really associated with that. They were always kind of the gatekeepers in many respects. They could take people down, but then they would always bomb out, basically. And yeah. even with like crazy lineups where you, you look at all the players, you're like, this team has so much experience and, and uh, so much poss there's so much possibility, so much in the way of possibilities to have deep finishes. But look at look at these finishes that they've been having, especially you know as of late. It's just it's just pitiful for some of the experience they've had. And obviously a lot of the players dropped out of the lineup. And Angel was one of the only ones that stuck around because it is his team. Yeah, he's uh, like part owner of the team or something like that. So with all the roster changes, he's the one that you can't get rid of. And yeah, Hellraisers, they have been the gatekeeper team. They've been, it's always been a case of, we're not going to go deep, but we're going to stop you from going deep in the tournament. Will that be the case here at the major qualifier? We are indeed live once more. We are good to go. And the buys will be coming in once again. Right then. Let's, uh, no, there's a pause. And if you are unaware as to how this system works, it's a Swiss system. So the simplest way to explain it is three wins of the best of ones and you're through and three losses and you're out. And so NIP already with a victory yesterday, a very handy victory on Dust2 against Renegades. They, if they're able to take the map against this map against Hellraisers, which they look well set up to do, that's going to make things pretty smooth. But if, if, they, if they actually lose this one, maybe there can be some complications then. So th there is a lot, of, a lot on the line really in every single best of one. So now uh, there's an issue with the T money, which they will sort out. This may take a few minutes, people. If you are just joining us, it is uh, 10 to 14 in favor of NIP, who uh, just got back to winning ways after three rounds in a row for Hellraisers. Just a short pause um, for us disconnected in the previous round, and that has led to some problems which are being dealt with at present. Yeah, it should be good to go pretty soon. Well, it's it's cool to see the NIP having a bit of a resurgence, I have to say, as well. Recently, from some of the results we've seen, obviously, it got kind of weird for a while. Obviously, Pitt had uh, the, the injury, and no one knew exactly how long he was going to be out. Makaleli came in to kind of fill the void, and they <laughs> managed to win a tournament with that. Oh, that is, that's not a comfortable resemblance. These moustaches, man. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about them. Well, they're all gone now, I think. Are they mostly gone? Are well, they, are some they are gone. gone. I, know, I, know, I know Get Rights is gone, but that one, uh, that fluffy thing. Who is it? is it? Is it Dozier that loves loves his moustache? Uh, it might be. Yeah, it probably is. Dozier loves a good moustache. It probably is. Which, which is all you need to know. So, obviously, you can see, I think, a little bit of frustration from the players. You know, no one ever likes, no one really likes a stop start. No one likes to stop start. And that also actually uh, was some of the contro uh, controversy with the new ruling where teams are able to pause so much more 
and you know that's the time in which coaches are allowed to to speak but looks like i am going to stop talking about that because we are about to go live we are ready to resume the match as you guys can see the freeze time is ticking away 14 is the score for nip 10 for hellraisers hellraisers just lost their first round after a streak of three can they stop nip from reaching 16. Right then, let's see what uh, Hellraisers have to offer. Super passive start. Look how passive he is. That is insanely passive. And we've seen some CT sides who uh, deploy smokes in that area. And maybe in this scenario, it would be quite effective. But there is no such uh, grenade from NIP in this round. Re-smoking Monster Tunnel on the close end rather than a deep end, however. And Zero's made his way through. It just took him down with ease. One man down for both sides. Pit up close. Should hear the footsteps of Bondic. I've got a smoke down, but Bondic's looking to creep through it. Yeah, Pit's just sitting there in the smoke with an AWP. Oh, there's two players behind him. Awkward stuff. And that's going to be the frag for Deadbox. Angel on the bomb side, able to claim one as well. Exist, having a great performance, has to keep that up here. Two players left against two as the bomb has to stop going down. Dead Fox with the peak and the frag onto Exist, leaving Freiburg for the clutch. It's going to be a tough one, though, but he does have a lot of time. He's got a kit, but no nades. He has no idea where these players are going, although maybe he just heard some running because he's starting to turn his attention to Dead Fox. He comes in. Freiburg can't get the frag, and that is the element of surprise now gone. Doesn't know where the second player is. Bondic has to assume there's some kind of crossfire going on. Bondic towards long. He won't be required. Dead Fox, good enough for it. And that's the economy of NIP reset. Another good opportunity for Hellraisers to continue their comeback. They won three rounds in a row, lost one, and uh, indeed you can see what that instant victory has done to the money of the NIP side. So will it be 14-13? Is that what we will soon be facing? Get right with a lot of money in the bank, you can drop an AWP later on for Forest or Pit. In the meantime, it is uh, Eco Town for NIP, not, not spending anything, not a single thing in this particular round. Will they stack a site? Majority of people going towards B for the CT side. See how Razor's posted up. Outside Monster. Going for a simple approach, it's Antico, but... They see somewhat of a stack towards B. Doesn't matter though, they've got the gun for it. Yeah, looking really smooth so far for Hellraisers. NIP will be conceding this round. And that brings Hellraisers to 12. NIP getting reset like that is really... Uh, we're going to set them back here. There is a lot of money on a couple of players, both Forest and Get Right, 5k and above, but not really the same for everybody else. But in that position, they're basically forced to go for the buy. If NIP lose this round, that's 14 13 for Hellraiser. Uh, two, uh, well, 14 13 is still in favor of NIP, but Hellraiser's then have to play against Nico. So that, if they lose this round, NIP are likely going 14 14. So this starts to get very tricky from this point forward, and having to defend with a, two UMPs and a FAMAS. Never a good sign. You need to play close ranges with those guns, really, to have efficacy against AKs. And that is... That's risky business. Nice. Wow, that's a, that is a good nade. What a timing there from Pit. That's a clean 50%. Angel in connector. Hellraiser's clearing connector quickly. Bondic moving on the high ground. It's nice to see that high-low split of the connector position. Look at this boost, though, on to Get Right. Nasty surprise incoming, surely, for one of these Hellraiser's players. The flash, though, towards short will force Get Right from his position. So now the game is up. Minute 10. Hellraiser's have some information as to the setup on B. But not much just yet. Haven't ventured towards long, where Forrest is with the AWP. Pit moving back towards A. Maybe even towards B in case uh, more help is required. See some peeking going on. Forrest got to be careful though. The barrel of the guns exposed for Dead Fox. Forrest going to stand his ground, but he could get traded from the bat from the bowler position. Indeed he will. But has he done his job with two kills? I think it might be worth it. He spotted the bomb. Pit goes close, and if he can win this battle, he's going to be able to claim a weapon. He's going to go for the pop flash play. Can he catch anyone out of position? Oh, Steve goes there. He's been spotted. This is risky. Pit needs the weapon. He gets it, and he will be able to get away with uh, his life, not even taking any damage, and he gets the kill onto Angel. Follow-up frag potential here for Pit. 
as the peak comes in and Pitt gets it. That's two for him now. And he knows, he knows, he saw someone towards long. So will he go for the peak? Looks like the flash will deter him for the time being, but that is the last player. Stiko is all that stands here between defeats in this round. The Hellraisers and victory for an IP, and that's where it's going to go. He has no time. NIP match points. Now we look at the uh, money on Hellraisers. Hellraisers have enough to buy. They have enough pretty much for a, a full buy across the board. Forest with this uh, huge second frag. Stiko behind the barrel, can trade at the very least. And then Pitt with a lovely performance in this position. Has a teammate to run distraction and capitalizes on that fact with that last kill there. Timeout from the Hellraiser's side, a uh, tactical timeout, wondering how they approach this again. They've got a cash for a full buy. It's just about how they use it. Yeah, this is an interesting situation. That is for sure. It's always fun as well, by the way, to see Forrest going for those individual plays. Again, putting himself in spots where he can't miss, but because it's Forrest, if he's feeling confident, he probably won't miss. So that's, you know, it's, it's something, you know, uh, unique to the very, very high high school players where that's that can be considered a play that's going to get you ahead most of the time now with nip with actually like good weapons now the your point of forest because before let's not forget they were stuck on umps which is probably part of the reason why forest felt like he had to make a big play before the hellraiser side was able to get to the site nip have the opportunity now to play passively but will they that's that's the question pit's turn to take the awp towards long Moving uh, very forward over there, you can see there's uh, seems to be a, hell, a focus from Hellraisers on the B bomb site. Monster currently smoked. Grenades being deployed. Will they push through though? Exist playing the close range, avoiding the flashbangs and taking these players by surprise. That is not to the Hellraisers' advantage. Lucky there's no team kill through, through that monster tunnel. Finally got a pick. Freiburg's here as well. Does he have any teammates to flash him? Get right there, but he's got no flashes. Down goes Get right. Freiburg now around the pillar, waiting for that smoke to disappear. And life will get harder once it does. Tough times for Freiburg. Nice pop flash coming in for the tease. Freiburg gets himself a double. That might just be enough now. Back into a two versus two. Forrest on the M4 once again. Pitts brandishing the AWP. And that incendiary will delay things ever so slightly as Dead Fox is still looking for the peak. And he's the guy closer to the bomb now. Angel will actually rotate to help Dead Fox out. And better be able to play trade angles. Pitt creeps in. He's got the AWP. Is he going to find the shot there? No, but Forrest is lurking around the water. He gets the shot, and now life is incredibly difficult for Dead Fox. One versus two with the AWP. Back into the AK. Looking for the last two players to save Hellraisers here. Spots Forrest, drops him off the top, and now it's just going to be Pitt. Oh, Dead Fox pulls it out of the bag somehow. The one versus two clutch. This guy continues to impress. That leaves NIP with 3,300 for three of the five players. That money is horrible for Nip now. This is around there, probably going to have to give up with their loss bonus reset once again. Hellraisers, they, they, Hellraisers have won four of the last five rounds. They have won six of the last eight rounds. So NIP having a difficult time closing these rounds out. And again, nothing bought whatsoever. They need every single cent for this uh, coming final round of normal time at the very least. Hellraisers with a full buy. Let's see what their anti is like. Oh, Forrest uh, will be caught off by Bondic. Angel as well finding Pit as they go aggressive. Very difficult to get stuff done in a round like this. But uh, for NIP, they'll actually have, I think, a decent amount of money going into the next round, as it will be uh, $1,900 rewarded to them, and they already have around 30 100 ish from those players. So they'll at least have everything that they want in, the, in that next round. But the problem is really that it then comes to that last round. Will we see another overtime? We saw it on the first map between CLG and Renegades. Oh, what a what a ride that was. <laughs> CLG coming back just in the most incredible fashion. 10, 10 rounds in a row against match point into uh, victory in overtime. Unbelievable stuff from them. Our raises are clawing things back here against NIP as well. And there it is, finishing off Get Right, the last remaining player with a USP. And now we will see NIP with a full buy. Can they prevent? Can they prevent overtime? If you're just joining us, Forrest does not have three kills. So you can ignore his part of the scoreboard. He has been present more than that on the map. Anyway, NIP, that's their last match point in normal time. 
grenades are somewhat limited, although their buy is fairly reasonable, all things considered, exist though onto the UMP. And he's been the uh, big fragger for the side so far. 32 kills onto Exist, and he will end UMP probably with the ump, unless he can pick something better up. Hellraiser starting off with the range again, get right boosted in that uh, position towards B, but Hellraisers have been good with the flashbangs there. That said, only Zero is towards B at the moment, and he's holding a passive angle, so maybe no, maybe no flashes anytime soon. Hellraiser still uh, just going through their map control process, the high-low push of the connector area. There's that flash onto short B again. But what do NIP do in response? Well, there's a smoke in response, and will we see another boost? Did Freiburg see a pixel there? I'm not sure, but get right back in. And now he's, the difference that he sees is that the door is open now, so that tells him connector presence. It also tells him someone can be in sewers now. Those are the two bits of information that get right just got from that, that little boost, but it's, it is problematic because it still doesn't tell him precisely what's going on. It's not enough. It's just a piece of the puzzle, but not by any means the entire picture. And the, looks like the picture might be revealed to NIP right now because Hellraisers are going for the push in through the monster tunnel. Oh, Exist. Oh my god, no one's seen Exist. Gets himself a free one to Dead Fox, but quickly traded. Oh, that was awkward. More trades come in. Get right on the site, though. No one spotted him just yet. At least there was a the play up below him. Doesn't matter. One for one. Forest should be heard. Deploying some grenades as well. Two to find. How does he avoid getting trade fragged here? Instant damage coming in. Angel peaks, but again, they need a double peak here, or do they? Zero gets the kill. They're very happy with that one. We are going to overtime. It really looked like NIP had it in the bag, but Hellraisers, they found themselves, they found some kind of groove, and uh, well, there was a lot of stop starting, though, because of technical problems, which is never nice, but it's. Uh, don't know if that helped them or hindered them, but they, they managed to get it over the line. They got themselves to 15-15. And NIP, I think in, in some respects, NIP, obviously you're, you're never happy when you've been on match sitting or match point and you, you fail to bring it over the line. But at the very least, a lot of their problems were caused by you know money. So that should not be a worry here. No double AWP from NIP on the CT side which is uh, less risk for their economy. Oh, Pitt going for the early frag. He will be the recipient rather than the deliverer. Minute 30 for Hellraiser to play with, for them to capitalize on this man advantage and find the hole in NIP, the hole that's been left by Pitt. Starting slow once again, Zero passively lurking towards B. No fast plays towards short B just yet. Again, Angel in connector, so we've often seen uh, Hellraiser's going for that high-low push through connector, but this time their approach is towards long. I see Forrest is waiting with a pop flash I'll to see if that is going to allow him to get some damage in, or if it will be what marks his fall in this round. It's, it's, a, it's a position that sometimes does go unchecked as well. And it's even better if someone can bait from that same position, then it would be top tier. But they obviously lost Pitts earlier on, so he doesn't have as many people to play with on the A bomb site. And after that initial presence, because how racers have sewers, they have the ability to double back to B, and that's exactly what they're going to do right now. And I they're just waiting. They are waiting, and oh, looks like Forrest. Oh, can he get the frag? It looks like he's good. H E in there, boom. Forrest with one, but now the push commences on to B. 20 seconds, Angel with the flashbang for the monster position, but nobody's there for the CT side. That said, the bomb site's just by being taken by these Hellraiser's players. The trades continue to their advantage. Some commotion towards short B, the bomb needs to get planted. Down it goes. Forest and get right remain. Lovely angle being held by Angel, and uh, Hellraiser's look good to take the lead on this T side. Again, they've had most of the momentum, and they start strong in overtime. They certainly do. I almost don't know which way to go with this. And it, it's a point you brought up uh, in the last overtime game we had. You know, if you're the team that was on the recovery, gaining momentum into the overtime, and you get to stay on that side, it does generally tend to help quite a bit, for that team at least. The Battle of the Musta Mustache is there, won by Angel. Right at the end. So that's a, that's a nice kill, and that is also a nice kill. Coming from Dead Fox, able to best pit there, and that really sets 
Hellraiser is up quite well because what that kill did is it forced incredible, very, very highly def defensive play from NIP. They gave up the entire map after that kill and Hellraiser's had a whole map to work with and they worked with it very, very well, actually. They caught NIP on a rotation as well on the first entry frag into B. Forest with a uh, forward position, but no orping. Not too forward, though. Gonna stop around the entrance to the toilets. He's been smoke, holding a smoke around here for the most part. Maybe trying to get some uh, semi-passive information as to what the setup of the T's might be. Hellraiser is now focusing on long with with uh, three players. Make it four. Zero joining in on the action. And they will move through the toilets. Or at least Bonic will be holding angles. Not the pick that Hellraiser's wanted towards long. With uh, three more players in that area, what do they have in mind for pits? I don't think he's going to... Oh, he has a flash to re-peak with. Flash onto the angle, re-peak, re-hold the angle. Gets a bit dangerous now, though. He's run out of flashbangs, but Hellraiser has also run out of an incentive to go towards A. So much attention there. They're going to go back towards the B position. There is no presence, though, there for them. That's always a bit scary, but... They're going to have to gamble on that. And you can see that one of the reasons why they are, or one of the ways to mitigate that is by going monster tunnel instead. Because going sewers, you have to go through connector. There's so many angles in sewers to worry about. Connect, uh, monster, you can see it's a much easier approach, whether you have to worry about much less in the way of positions. You can see uh, Zero trying to check every, everything. And Hellraiser is all ready to push to B. Freiburg with some early info. No time for counter grenades, though. Got to play around the smoke. Zero taking exist down in the meantime, but insta trade from get right. Do Hellraiser's commit to this? They don't have time to rotate, really. Angel gambling for the smoke as long as it doesn't pay off for him. 19 took his Desert Bomb down as well. Dead Fox versus three. Gonna wait for that plant to come in unless he forces the issue towards Jobby. Fryback takes it in the face. 10 seconds of bomb can still go down here. And no one's facing from NIP. Going for the retake once that plant comes in. One on the low ground, one on the high. You see, uh, I think it's Forrest repositioning there. Dead Fox has the AK, however. He has a, the advantage in that respect. Got less than half his health. Moving back to a one versus one angle, trying to avoid getting trade frags. He pit crouching there, but now he's moving forward again. Ah. Makes it easy for Pitt to uh, scope in and finish him off. One round e each person now, and Forrest has gone to collect that second AWP. Yeah, almost uh, actually wondered if Dead Fox could pull that one off as he's been in good form this match so far, but Cats and Counter Strike. What do you think, James? I think it's a laptop and a cat. And the cat's maybe streaming because he's on webcam. He or she is on webcam. Counter-Strike cat. Nice. Nice. 16 to 16. There was a cool picture, actually, of two pugs watching when uh, I whipped out the vel oh, velvet yeah, jacket. Yeah. There was, they were showing mad respect for the velvet jacket. But anyway, last round of the first half. Who will take a thin lead into the second here in overtime? Freiburg, get right, exist. All over towards the B-bombs like to start with. Pit towards long. Forest around the bogs, the toilets, the lavatories. Angel quickly over towards short B. A difference from Hellraisers. Could it work out for them? He's been spotted. Smoke goes down as well. So push comes at the same time. Are these nades going to help uh, get right and co out on the bomb site? There's still two players here. Freiburg's there as well by water. So there's still defense to be had here on the B bomb site. Nades are starting to trickle in. Freiburg there. Good adjustment. Pit will go down though. But still, get right and Freiburg persist on the bomb site. And this does stop the bomb from going down just yet. More nades coming in from the T's to try to clear space as get right works himself into all the holes that he can possibly find in the, in all of the blind spots, perhaps, of these T's. And there's one. Takes down Angel. Stiko on the bomb site. Get right knows he's there. Jumps across onto the top, but Stiko expects it. And it looks very bad here now for NIP, surely. But Forrest steals away another frag. Bonnick's been waiting for the rotation all this time. I don't think Forrest saw his opponent through the flames there, as can often happen. Coming in for... Oh, Forrest! That's disgusting! Both at the same time, and he's got a kit. That is grotesque. I didn't even know what to say. Man. That was nasty. That was nasty stuff. There's like, with the, the, the time on the, the bomb, there are only so many ways you can win this round. Double, double up. That, that's, that's one way. That is one of the few ways you can win this round. Why not? Great stuff, Mr. Forrest. I was almost wondering, like I was almost questioning myself, like he's go he's going for this play all around the back, all the way around the back there. Around the back. Is he going to have time to actually do any do anything? And well, 
There you go. That is quite the save. 17 to 16, moving into the second half of the first overtime. Forrest has given a real edge here for NIP to try to play off of. Let's see if that, that edge can be compounded into a victory. Hellraiser is going to have to just shake that one off like Tyler Swift. And move on. And move on. They're on the CT side now. They are a mere one round behind their opponents, NIP, who are back in the lead. Back once again, Hellraiser of a similar start to the uh, CT side. Three into B. Dead Fox over towards long with the AWP. But this time, no early picks from NIP. Perhaps it will come later. Hellraiser, though, we'll see if they've learned their lesson. Interesting that the that both CT sides have chosen to uh, re-smoke Monster in quite shallow fashion. Because if you throw it to the other side, if someone's in the tunnel, then you'll hear it collide with them. So you get some extra info there for free. Minutes on the clock for an IP. This is a great position from Dead Fox. It is quite a risky one, so you want a good player to try to do the job. But one for one is not necessarily what you bargain for with forward positioning like that. You really want to be able to get two out of it. And did miss the first shot, so that explains that. Now he just works his way into long. And again, there's no presence towards B here for MIP, so they don't really have the option to go B safely. It's not a safe choice. And the blind spot from Bondic, this position is so annoying to deal with. Will Exist check for it? Is he checking for it? Yes, he will. Even though the Shadow gives his position up, Exist still gets the fast headshot. And now the wrap from Get Right over towards the A-bomb site. And it looks like Stiko's going to hold it down for the time being. But how long can he survive? Another one, the Incendiary doing work to delay the splits. Perfect stuff here so far, but they walk into the spray. And now Angel's in a one versus two. But he's got time on his side. Oh man, Angel. Perfectly placed, perfectly timed. The round for Hellraisers. Angel was position unknown, especially because the T's advanced from that position and uh, Angel didn't have much work to do. So they thought it was safe, it wasn't safe. 17 to 17, we've seen big clutches now from both sides. Freiburg almost turning to his doom there. Angel, uh, very good to quickly get, quickly get that second headshot, especially with that uh, the recall cooldown we have these days in CSGO. Nothing between these two teams. Forrest, no AWP between uh, his him and his opponent. So that might be a problem. That comes into play later on. Fast play from Angel, only good for the one kill. Stiko wants to hold on to the B-bomb site, doesn't go to trade again. Really good stuff there from Exist. You have to trade that kill. You cannot allow the CTs to hold on to the Suez play. They took a risk. They came up short, essentially. Now they have to... They, they, they are asked... Oh, hang on. Hang on, the legs are spotted there, but Zero does pick up the kill. As I say, with a, a four versus four situation this early, Harry's Zara in a position where they might have to get a little bit aggressive, make a play to uh, stop NIP, but uh, that actually works out pretty well. The aggression taken by NIP is stopped for now, but Forrest now leads the aggression, looking for the one and done spot. Will he be able to find this entry frag? That would be huge if he can. Oh, the barrel position. That is painful. Stiko guns him down. Yeah, that aim punch was brutal. He was just begging for a clean shot, but it never came. Freiburg not going to get his gun out in time. And uh, that is NIP in the gutter. Can they pull themselves out, though? They are going to be limited on grenades. Get right and pit have enough for full armor and an AK and nothing else. A clean 3,700. Forrest with $2,000 in the bank. This is, uh, this is awkward for the NIP side. Had to be favorites going into this. They thought it would be difficult for Hellraisers, and it was in normal time, but they found themselves at match point. This is kind of crazy. Hellraisers can do this. They have the advantage. They actually have the advantage going into this match point situation. Oh dear, NIP in some trouble. How are they going to get themselves out of this situation? Forrest there with a very fast approach onto Long. Their Fox giving it up very quickly, actually, despite there being no real resistance. Probably would have been a, an easy shot on Forrest, but... He's not to know. Close it up here from Bondic. A smoke trick, perhaps. You can see just over the top of that, that is quite devastating. If there was an NIP player to peek. Freiburg just keeping an eye on the smoke. Just in case. Bondic close again, but he sees there's a gap. Freiburg will get punished. NIP even more disadvantaged now. Pits. As he takes some risks, NIP 
will get right, picks up the AK, but they're all falling apart through the smoke pit, gets picked off. Flashbangs come in, there goes Forrest, get right, trying to do what he can, but he's the only man now versus four. There's one body taken down, three players on the site. The bomb's on the site as well. He's got just under a minute with which to try and claw this one back. How does he avoid getting triple peaked, let alone double peaked? That's a nice Molotov to force Dead Fox from his position, but which way will he go? He's going to go back towards the bank area. Maybe that gives Get Right a slight advantage. Going for a crouch peak versus Stiko, but again, time's running out as well now, which means he has to take more and more risks. The CTs lie in wait. They've got the lasers trained. 20 seconds now for Get Right to kill three people. He's teased. The triple peak comes in, and there it is. 19-17. Hellraisers explode around their tables. They've taken a match versus an IP. They are completely elated. Can you blame them? They had to claw it back against match point. NIP just couldn't bring it over the line. They looked like a shoe in. They looked like they were guaranteed to be able to take it.